we are going to talk about absolute values now. Absolute values get their names by denoting them with these bars. Absolute values represent the distance and numbers away from zero. Thus, it is always positive. So when we have an absolute value of 8, the answer will always equal 8. If we have the absolute value of negative 8, our answer will again always equal 8. Will there ever be an answer to this problem below? The answer is no. We cannot have an absolute value equal to a negative number because of the rule up here. We know an absolute value must always have a positive answer, so this one below will not work. The answer for this one would be no solution. If we have absolute value of x equals a number, say 3, we know, however, that our absolute value of x can either equal a 3, which is positive, or a negative 3. This is another rule to keep in order not to be mistaken with this one below. Remember, if x is inside the absolute values, it will have two answers. Some steps to solving absolute values include, first, like always, we are going to isolate the absolute value expression. Once we do that, we are going to set up two equations to solve. We are going to have an equation that is going to have a negative number and a positive number, just like our example before, with the absolute values equal to 3. Our equations will have an answer equal to a positive and a negative number. In other words, for the first equation, we're going to drop the absolute value bars and solve the equation. For the second equation, we'll drop the absolute value bars and negate the opposite side and solve the equation. Negating the opposite side means turning the number to negative. And once we have done all this, we're going to want to check the solutions to make sure our answer is correct. For the equation above, the first thing we notice is that it is an absolute value expression. The first step in absolute value expression is to make sure that it is isolated. As we can see in the above equation, our absolute value is already isolated, so then we can start with the next step. Our next step to solving absolute value expressions is to set up two equations. Remember, we set up the equation and drop the absolute value bars and make it equal to the same number. The second equation then negates the opposite, which means we will set it equal to the negative of the number given, so it would be negative 7. Our next step then would be to solve each individually. Our first answer would be 2x plus 1 equals 7. We would do the same thing, subtract 1 from both sides. 2x would equal 6. Our next step would be to divide by 2 to both sides. We would then get x is equal to 3. Next, our second equation, we would do the same thing. Subtract 1 to both sides, leaving us with 2x equal to negative 8. We then would do divide each side by 2, leaving us with x equals a negative 4. Remember, our last step is to plug both of these in to our starting equation. Our answers check out and we know that our solutions are correct. So our solutions would be 3 and negative 4. Also can be written in brackets. Another example of an absolute value is given above. Remember our first step to solving absolute value expressions is to make sure the absolute value is isolated. In our above equation, our absolute value is not isolated, so our first step would be to divide both sides by 6. When doing this, we then end up with our absolute value equaling a number, which tells us that it is isolated. Then we go to our second step, setting our equations into two separate ones. So our first equation would be the same and have 5x plus 2 equals 52. Our next equation would drop the absolute value bars and negate the opposite. 
so we would have a negative 52 in the other equation. We go about solving them the same way, subtracting 2 to both sides in both equations. In the left side, we get 5x equals 50. Divide both sides by 5, we will get x equals 10. On the other side, after we subtract 2 to the other side, we get 5x equals 54 negative. Once we have this, we will divide both sides by 5, leaving us with x equal to a negative 10 eighths. Remember then, our last step is to check our answers and solutions to make sure that they even out in the end. And once we have checked them, we know that the answers work for our following absolute value. Here is a more challenging absolute value expression. We will start this like all the others, making sure we isolate the absolute value. To do this in the first step, we will add 7 to both sides. When adding 7 to both sides, we get 3 absolute values of x plus 2 equals our 21. Our next step will be to divide both sides by 3. These divide to 1. And we are left with the expression, the absolute value of x plus 2 equals our 21 divided by 3, which gives us our 7. The next step for an absolute value expression would be to set it into two equations. Our first equation would be x plus 2 equals 7, and our second equation would be x plus 2 equals our negative 7. To solve this is the same way. We will subtract our negative 2 from both sides, giving us an x equals 5. On the other side, we would also subtract our 2, giving us an x equals negative 9. Now, however, we are not done. Our last step is to plug in our solution into the original problem and make sure our answer checks out for both solutions. Now, our last step will be to write x equals our negative 5 comma negative 9 and we can put these in a set notation.